If the heat exchanger is leaking on your Kia Nero, you can either replace that heat exchanger for $1,638.08, or you can bypass it for $23.29. Let's walk through that process together. Find yourself a piece of coolant hose that's preformed with a 180 degree bend. Uh, make sure that both ends are 3 quarter inch inside diameter. With this particular part, I had a 180 degree bend and a 90 degree bend, so I'm just using a razor blade to cut off the 90 degree portion to leave me with this, this U-shaped 180 degree bend. I'll, I'll include links to this part and uh, at least one other option in the description for this video. Jack your car up, slide on underneath from the front, and find the coolant send and return hoses. Line up your bypass hose and sort of eyeball it to make sure it looks like it'll fit properly. And in my case, I score it with a razor blade here because I want to take off another quarter inch to get a perfect fit. You use a pliers to back the hose clamps off of each of the send and return hoses. Even with those hose clamps backed off, the, the hose is stuck onto the pipe pretty good, so you might have to do what I'm doing here. Use a pick or a screwdriver to, to break the hoses free from the pipes. And have your oil catch pan ready, because you will lose some coolant during this process. Now you can see me being real careful in this video. I'm going from hose to hose, getting a slow trickle. Uh, that's because I wasn't sure of how much coolant would come out or how fast it would come out. You can see roughly what the flow is from this video, and I measured the coolant after the fact. You're going to lose a little less than a gallon uh, by opening up these send and return hoses. So make sure you have enough space in your catch pan for that. You use pliers to get those hose clamps back off the send and return hoses because we're going to reuse them for our bypass hose. Get those send and return hoses out of the way and wiggle your bypass hose into place. And once it feels snug, use your pliers to move the hose clamps back into place. And then we'll secure everything with a couple of zip ties. Now it's a little bit hard to see in the video, so let's take a look in this still image. There's our bypass hose, our original send and return hoses. There's the zip tie tying those together. And finally the zip tie holding the original hoses to the bypass hose. So we lost a little bit less than a gallon in this process. We're going to have to put that back in little by little. Here you can see me filling the reservoir and then starting the engine, and the engine just gobbles it up immediately. You're going to have to repeat this process a few times. In fact, even after getting close to full in my garage, I continued to monitor for the next three or four trips, and each trip I, I did have to top off a little bit until I stayed consistently within the min-max marks. All right, that's how you bypass the heat exchanger on a Kia Nero. Uh, time for a little bit of editorial, though. This is definitely a perform-at-your-own-risk bypass. Uh, that heat exchanger is designed to be there. It's designed to bring that engine up to temp as fast as possible, and I presume to maintain the temp even when you're not doing things that would normally maintain the optimal operating temperature. So there's a risk that bypassing the heat exchanger will result in the engine operating at less than optimal temperatures, which could result in extra wear and tear and shorter engine life. Nothing super scientific here, but I have observed that it takes me about three miles of highway driving before I get to the optimal operating temperature, which is seven bars or, or just one bar beneath the midpoint on the Nero temperature gauge. I've also observed that I rarely, if ever, get to optimal operating temperature when just taking short trips on surface streets at uh, 25 to 35 miles per hour. I never really paid attention to my temperature gauge until I performed this procedure, so I don't really know if I have normal readings or not, and I'd be curious to know if any of you Kia Nero owners out there uh, who still have functioning heater cores can confirm, for example, does it take you three miles or less of highway driving to reach optimal operating temperature? Uh, do you ever reach optimal operating temperature when you're just driving on surface streets? Please let me know in the comments.